Hey, welcome to the Learn to Rope Log, episode 13. This week I'm making a video about a different way to practice. As you can see it's real gray right now and I have not been able to rope for, seems like over a week now. It's been raining so much that you can barely really, can't really pull the sled out in the pasture because it's so wet. But I've been doing a couple things. For one, I've got a fiddle playing gig this weekend pays pretty well and I want to do my very best so I've been practicing fiddle quite a bit and something I figured out trying to get better on the fiddle I think may help me roping so I'll talk about that in a minute but just a couple things I've been doing oh friend my friend JR told me I need to just get more aggressive with starting my swing and roping going after the steer and getting ready to rope when I got to, to my spot instead of trying to get everything in just right in position and then running down the halfway down the pen fighting my horse and trying to pick my horse up and letting my swing fall out so I've been uh, backing off my dummy 30 or 40 feet and basically running up and roping and running up off to the left into the right and trying to mix it up to where when I'm not even in perfect position I'll be able to be ready and throw and hopefully when I get to rope live steers again I'll I'll focus on seeing the horns and starting my swing aggressively right from the very be beginning of the run instead of letting it hang loose for a minute before I get it going so what I've been doing on the fiddle though is that the last few years I've been playing off and on regularly. Sometimes I'll go a few months and not practice and then I'll get a gig and I'll start practicing and I feel like I've I felt like I've been up against a wall or a plateau in some ways that I I know I need to get better, but I've had trouble breaking out of it and, and just improving my just my skill on my hands and, my, and making my playing cleaner and, and well it's hard to describe I guess but just being a better player <laughs> and I remember an, uh, an interview I heard with a lady or a woman that was a I think she was a psychologist and a some type of doctor She'd done a lot of research in and I don't remember her name or the name of her book, which I ordered and have not read yet, but from this interview she talked about coaching high-level golfers and musicians. I mean, that people playing in, you know, top of the world, I mean, the symphony orchestra of Beijing or whatever, what have you. Obviously, a little higher than my level right now, but she, uh, when they were having trouble or, or trying to get better, she would have them lay down on their back and, and either perform the motion or go through the motion without a golf club or a, or a violin or what have you. And something about that process allows you to feel in a different way and allows your brain to assimilate it better. And I'm, I'm probably butchering her thesis, so I'll try, to, I'll try to go through and find what it was I listened to. That's been probably a year ago and, and it kind of just popped into my head the other day. about. I started trying this about two weeks ago playing fiddle so I lay down on my back and it feels real clumsy and and doesn't work that well but I would I would take a a series of notes that I was working on that would challenge my fingers or where I was having trouble keeping it clear and not and not getting muddy or and uh, and I would just lay down on my back and and play it till my arms were basically falling off and, and it, they get tired in a different way a lot faster and so but what I noticed is then I'd stand back up and it would be effortless and just it like it, it like it flowed like I've never felt and I, I think it is doing something in in your brain and I don't know what it is exactly so I and it's even carried through practicing with the band I've been able to stay relaxed and and play and perform much better in the moment than I had been 
and I feel like I've made a breakthrough in that regard. So I'm going to keep doing that with the with the fiddle. But I'm also I'm kind of scheming on how I could how I could apply that to learning to swing my rope better. And it doesn't seem like it would work because obviously if you lay on your back, you can't swing your rope. And I thought maybe try it just using the motion, but it still would be funny with your arm here on the ground. But I had the bright idea. Now you can laugh at me and call me crazy, but I laid on the in the back of my truck, my head hanging off the tailgate, and I started trying to swing my rope that way. And it boy, it feels it's like nothing else. I mean, it's not a it doesn't feel good or easy. I've only done it a couple times, and and so I'll have to get back to you or. or remember to update or <laughs> describe how this is going over the next week or two but I'm gonna try and keep doing that that old trucks wet right now so I can lay down on my back and get all wet and with my head hanging off and it's hard because if, if your head's on the tailgate then it's, it's still it's hard to get your swing right your head has to about be hanging off and then you get tense trying to hold your neck up anyway I'm not sure why I'm even telling anyone this until I know if it works or not but this is this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm trying. I'm trying a few different things to make use of the time when I can't be roping, and hopefully I'll be. I won't have fallen back, or hopefully think stuff will come together when I get back to live steer. So another thing I've another thing I've been doing, which I think is going to help, is I've always noticed my best days of roping. I've it's, it's been when I was really with my horses and riding out riding out of the box smoothly and and I know that's obvious but you like you watch Trevor Brazil's DVD and, and you can see in one of his split split frame shots he shows you where how big of a difference it is to come out in time with your horse and be balanced and some days I some days I'm doing real well in that regard and other days it's more of a struggle and I, so what I've been doing is uh since it's too too wet to rope the sled i've been getting on my black horse just getting on bareback and and i got a long hill in the back pasture and i'll i'll try to post up on my inside of my legs here with my heel, heels down and well, my hips hips caught towards my target or or imaginary target and and just jog up the hill stop them turn around come back down and try i'm trying to do that for 20 or 30 minutes every day or two and I think it's good it's helping my horses kind of stay in shape a little bit instead of sitting around here in the rain and not getting ridden so I've, I've done it with my gray horse as well but mainly bareback I like my black horse better because he's got a little rounder back <laughs> but uh once again I don't know how if this is going to translate to improvement in my roping but I, I have to think it will and or trust that it will and keep working hard at, in some way trying to figure out a different way to different way to learn so I don't keep trying the same thing and getting frustrated by the same thing over and over <laughs> so with that said I'm the rest of this week I'm gonna be more focused on music but I'm going to Keep messing around with my rope and and next week I'll be back at roping live steers and I think it's gonna be fun I'll remember remind myself when I do to relax and enjoy it and, and just let all the things that I've worked on let them come out and not try too hard and so that's it for this week thanks for watching and call me crazy but I'm gonna figure this out one way or the other so adios